Hello, Ninth and O. My name is Greg Brewster, and I'd like to welcome you to today's Devotionable, a brief devotion for busy people. In his message to us on September 29th, Dr. Cook used 1 Samuel 7 to warn us, among other things, about drifting. Recall that the Ark of the Covenant had been returned to the Israelites. The Israelites thought that meant that the presence of God had returned home to them. But then for 20 years, nothing happened, only lamenting. Seems like there should have been a lot of joy, maybe even renewed spiritual vigor, but no. I, wondered what, I wonder what they were expecting. Lives of physical comfort, an end to conflict with other nations? Did they think that nothing was required of them now that the ark had been returned to Israel? Yes, they were children of God, but there seemed to be nothing in their lives that inspired worship of the one true God. In fact, even with the return of the ark, they continued to worship the idols and false gods that had developed while the ark was gone. Nothing was increasing their faith or developing their passion for God. Nothing was changing. The Israelites were like a motorless boat adrift in the sea. Fast forward to our scripture passages for today, Matthew chapter 9 and Luke chapter 7. Jesus has come to the earth. He came as an infant, but now he has grown to become a man. He has experienced and is experiencing everything that we do as humans on this earth. But of course, he was not just any man. He was the Son of God. He has called his disciples and is fully engaged in his ministry. In these two chapters alone, Jesus raises two people from the dead, and he heals six people from various maladies. He continues to demonstrate his power, his wisdom, and his identity as the Son of God. But for many people, it seems that the presence of God, this time in the flesh, is not making any difference at all. Some are openly hostile, wanting to preserve their own power and influence. But beyond that, uncertainty and apathy exist, even among those who are already believers and new members of the kingdom. Luke chapter 7, verses 18 through 23, relate the story of two of John the Baptist's disciples who come to Jesus on behalf of John the Baptist himself. They ask if Jesus is really the Messiah, or should they be looking for someone else? Jesus reminds them, and John, that the blind are receiving sight, the lame are walking, the lepers are being cleansed, the deaf are hearing, the dead are being raised, and the poor are having the good news preached to them. Jesus is making a difference, but we humans are so slow on the uptake. Jesus was encouraging them to open their eyes. Look around. Do you not see what is happening here? God included this story in Scripture as a message for us. Let us not be apathetic or lazy. We need to open our eyes and look around. The Israelites of Samuel's day were missing it. The Jews of Jesus' day were missing it. Let us not miss it. Matthew 9 concludes with Jesus traveling throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, healing every disease and affliction. He saw crowds of people and had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. He said to the disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Those of us who are members of the kingdom but not counted among the workers, are like the Israelites of Samuel's day, like the Jews of Jesus' day. We are, like a, we are drifting like a motorless boat on the sea. We are not in danger of losing our salvation, but the kingdom could be smaller because we are not fully engaged. Jesus' comment to the disciples concludes with, therefore, Pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest 
to send laborers out into the harvest. Ninth and O, may we be the answer to that prayer. Have a blessed day, my friends.